Anthony Scaramucci, there is a report, and tell me if it's correct, that when Donald Trump was facing what he thought might be defeat in 2016, he actually thought of leaving the country, of getting out of Dodge, as it were. Do you think that might be going through his mind right now as he is kind of ebbing towards what could be his defeat? Well, uh, not, not leaving the country permanently. I think he, was, he wanted to go to his golf course, his brand new golf course in Scotland, and, and play golf for a week. I don't, I don't think he was interested in leaving the country permanently. I, I now think he's going to be emboldened by the election results, and he'll stay around the rim here and be a force in American politics. You could have uh, had a pay-per-view with your last two contestants, by the way. I enjoyed that immensely. But the truth of the matter is the president has captured the imagination of about 76 million Americans. And so we have to have a reckoning for that. If you're a establishment, normal Republican like I am, or you're the garden variety Democrat, you have to look at what's going on in the country and recognize that we have to cure the ills of those people that voted for Donald Trump. He's a misogynist. He's a racist. He is somebody that mishandled the pandemic, lied about the science, uh, wrecked the U.S. economy, mm. and has made weaker our alliances around the world while he's denigrating Democratic leaders and praising despots. And so yet, despite all that, he got 76 million Americans to vote for him. And so we better wake up as a society and recognize that there's a problem in the society and there's tons of angry people out there that feel disaffected from the system. So when they hear nonsense like deep state right. and all that stupid nonsense, they actually believe it. They actually think that there could be a conspiracy against them. And of course, the president fuels it on his Twitter feed. OK, but what I don't get, Anthony Scaramucci, and I've asked others uh, from the ex members of the administration the same questions. Why on earth, if you're saying all this stuff now, did you work for him? Why were you seduced by him? Well, listen, I've, I've explained that many times, and I'm happy to go over it again. I was working for Jeb Bush. I was a garden variety Republican fundraiser for him, and I was on his campaign finance team. Uh, when he came out of the race, Mr. Trump recruited me. I made the mistake of ego and pride in going to work for him. And then I did something even more perilous. I used cognitive dissidence to override some of the things that he was saying. Of course, that cost me. I, got, I ended up uh, doing something stupid inside the White House that got me fired. I'm accountable for that. Never blame the president or chief of staff Kelly for my firing, only myself. I tried to stay loyal to the president, but it became impossible. If you're putting women in cages and separating the children from them, putting the children in cages, denouncing the intelligence agencies, calling the press too many people, it just became too much. And so what I've said to my liberal friends, the president may not have changed, but over the last five years, I have changed. I've become more psychologically minded, more willing to accept the fact that I made a mistake in supporting him, and now it's important for us to defeat him, which we have. We, he's, he's going on January 20th, and it'll be a very good day for America and the world. OK, well, it's still a big if. If the president loses, what's to prevent no, him it's from not running a, it's again not a big in four if. years' time? Like, we got we to gotta talk facts here. It's not, it's not a big if. He, he has lost the vote. Well, OK, uh, it's, the it's a medium are sized be if. by those secretaries of state. It's not, it's not a big if. It's, a, it's at 92% in the betting it's market. Not, it's the not only thing that's yet. stalling it okay. is his in, insurrection. Right. OK. That's not a big okay, deal. The question was, give him his due in his final hours b before the results are called, if that's what's going to happen. Is he going to run again in four years' time? Well, he's already saying to people inside, you know, remember, I have still a lot of friends uh, that were inside the campaign and in the White House. He's already suggesting he knows his goose is cooked here. Uh, Republican lawyers have told him it's almost impossible to get those states to recount. You have to be at certain thresholds. Uh, and so he, he knows that uh, he's going down, and so he's going to threaten running again, and we'll have to see what happens. Listen, he has, a, he has a pulse of the American people. A good half of the American people are adhering to him, and so we need to really look at that and reflect upon that and see if we can change that and make their lives better and make their lives more aspirational so they can drop him. Okay, just finally and, and briefly, if you could, you know him quite well. He's in that building behind me. What's he feeling at the moment? What's he doing? Is he pacing? Well, he's a cunning guy. I think his adversaries have a tendency to underestimate his intelligence. And so he's really trying to figure out. He's spinning a Rubik's Cube right now, 
trying to figure out if he can reset those re election results. And when it becomes clear that he can't, he'll make a move to protect his family and himself from going to jail as a result of these criminal investigations that they're under.